Today, we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit special, and that is this, the Hue Pro GPS module from CubePilot. Now, the Hue series of GPS has been around for quite some time. We've seen the Hue 1, the Hue 2, the Hue 3, and we even now have the Hue 4. However, the Hue Pro takes things to the next level. Not only is this an F9P based GPS module that fully supports RTK base and Rover, it also supports moving baseline as well, allowing you to fly your aircraft in environments that would normally be challenging for normal quads that would use a compass. Now the Here Pro is specifically designed to be used with the Cube Autopilot. There are many different versions of the Cube on the market. This year is the Cube Orange Plus, but we now even have the Cube Red as well. And you can even use it alongside things like the Here Link you see here. Now, today's video is going to be a part one on this GPS because whilst I initially wanted to put everything into one video, there is simply too much to talk about. Today's video is going to be an overview of the GPS module, walking you through the basic setup and then talking about how to update the firmware. In the second video, we're going to take a look at installing it on my quad and taking it for a fly, not only showing you it both using GPS base as well as Rover, but talking about that moving baseline feature using two of these modules on a 650 quad. Now, before we get into it, I just want to say a massive thank you to Philip Rose and the team over at Qpilot. They have actually sent this over to me to have a look at and I would not have been able to make this video without your support. If you're interested in getting one of these, there will also be a link to 3DXR in the description. They are one of the main distributors for Qpilot across the globe and they're the ones that actually supplied this to me. So again, if you're interested in getting this GPS or even things like the Cube, the Hue Link, please do check them out. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what this GPS is actually all about. Now, as I've mentioned already, the Hue Pro is certainly no ordinary GPS module. If we lift the lid, the first thing you'll notice is its sheer size. It is much larger than a standard GPS module. That is because it has a really high-end antenna on board, giving you the best possible reception. But that's also to accommodate all of the extra features that this unit has. As I mentioned, this is a professional GNSS module. It is designed to be used with the likes of Ardupilot, PX4, as well as any other custom software applications you may have that you wish to design to use it with. It has not only the F9P chipset from Ublox, but it also has a built-in STM32H7 SoC, allowing you to use custom applications. It is fully compatible with the AP Perif firmware from the Ardupilot dev team, and it has other features such as the Profi LED programmable LEDs built in as well. Now, this module has a huge amount of capability and one of the real interesting features that this module has is moving baseline. Not only can you use it as a GPS RTK base or rover, it also supports GPS yaw on Ardupilot, meaning that you can use this GPS in applications where a normal compass on your aircraft wouldn't work. Now, taking a closer look at the module itself, first of all, as I've said, it is much larger than you would find from a standard GPS module. If I just grab myself the new here, just to put that next to it, you can see that there is a substantial difference in size. That is there with weight as well, which we'll talk a bit more about later on. Looking around the GPS itself, what you will notice is on the bottom, there are no cables. There is just this pin header and there is an IO header board included with the GPS, which we'll take a look at in a minute. But what you haven't got on this is a standard wire setup like you see on some of the others, because this really is designed for you to be able to integrate it into your professional system. All around the sides, you will also see the Profi LEDs that run literally all the way around the outside. These are fully programmable via a Lua script, and frankly, they can go so bright they will burn the eyes out of your head. Now, just walking you through what's also included in the box, as I've said, they include this PCB. This 
is the I.O. board that connects to the bottom of the GPS module. We have pogo pins on this, and the way this works is you would mount that onto there, screw it in place, and that gives you your I.O. for the GPS. We'll take a closer look at this in a minute because there's some very interesting options on this as well that you wouldn't find on a normal GPS module. Also in the box, we then have a sticky pad just to help us stick it to something if we wanted to. We have some screws that holds that board in place, a USB-C cable for using this in the base configuration, and then we've got our I.O. cable that allows you to plug it in. Walking you through the I.O. and the first thing you'll notice is that there are two XT30s. This GPS module requires direct DC input power. It supports an input voltage range of 6 to 40 volt, although you can use it up to 60 volt max, and it has two ports for input redundancy. It is a CAN bus GPS module supporting drone CAN and there are two CAN ports installed as well and then you have a USB header port for using it as say a base application and a debug port as well. Now with regards to the size and weight on this module it is 78mm in diameter by 17mm deep and it weighs 110 grams with that pogo pin board installed. Now, just to walk you over the main technical specs of the Here Pro module, as I've mentioned already, it is based on the F9P High Precision RTK module from Ublox. It supports up to 184 channel and all of the usual GPS constellations such as Beidou, Galileo, GPS, GLONASS, as well as Quasi Zenith. It has a custom tailor-made antenna from Tailglass supporting L1, L2 and E5 frequencies and it has an option of being used as either a base or rover so you can use it as a base station via that USB connection but it also supports that moving baseline or GPS your feature which we'll talk about a bit more later on. Externally, it is a mix of plastic and metal construction, built-in Profi LEDs and those pogo pin pads on the bottom for custom installation. Now, alongside the GPS features, it also has a ton of horsepower for custom applications. It has an STM32H7 SoC on board. It also features a built-in 9-axis IMU. It has dual CAN bus ports, dual DC input supporting 6 to 40 volt, as well as a debug port on the bottom. And whilst today it basically runs the AP PRIF firmware with that H7 SoC, you you have the option to run custom applications on board and in fact because it has that SOC and IMU you could actually build this into a complete standalone flight control system with the IMU on board, the GPS and everything being built into the module. Whilst there isn't any software for that available today, this module is definitely aimed for either high-end custom applications or situations where you want a GPS module that's going to give you the best possible performance. Now with regards to installing this GPS module on your quad, you are going to need to design your own setup. However, there is a stand listed for this on the Pilot website and I have actually made a modification of that stand allowing you to install it with that Pilgo pin board and I will put a link to that in the description but as I've said this module is designed for more custom applications than a standard module and as such you're going to want to design the integration of this into your system. Now what I've done is taken an existing design by a guy, I can't remember what his name is, I will put a link to the design in the description, it says SR on the side, that was his logo. This stand was actually designed for the original pre-release here Pro and not the one you see here, however it didn't fit it with this board. But what I've done is taken his design and modifier and I've listed that on Thingverse and then allowing that to fit on to the original design stand from Qpilot. This is downloadable as a step file and then you can mount and glue that onto there. This then has enough space inside for you to bring all your wiring up and what you would then do is fit this over the top. The screws then would go through the holes there and there to hold that GPS in place. Further to that, I've then designed this much larger stand. This is actually what I'm going to mount onto the quad. There's going to be two of these, one on either side, keeping the GPS apart for the moving baseline feature. And again, it's the same design. What you would then do is remove the screws. You're going to need longer screws for the mounting. 
mount that then onto there with the screws holding it in place. As I mentioned already, this GPS is designed for sort of commercial industrial applications where you're going to be integrating it into your system. So as a result of that, they've left the design of the stand up to you. Now, whilst this module is designed to be used with the Qpilot Autopilot, such as the Orange Plus that I've got here, it is compatible with any Autopilot that supports DroneCan. And as I've said, it is supported in both Ardropilot and PX4. Now, one of the real big features of the Here Pro is the fact that it is an RTK module, but it also supports the moving baseline feature. That is also known as GPS Yaw, and if you don't know what it is, it is a setup that allows you to use two of these modules on your drone to avoid getting interference from metal structures. Most drones that have GPS also use a compass sensor to allow it to figure out which way it's pointing and maintain its heading. Whilst that's fine in the open air, when you're flying around metal ferrous structures, that metal will interfere with the compass and the drone will begin to lose its orientation and in fact it can even crash. Moving baseline is the feature that rather than using the compass to maintain heading, it uses two very accurate GPS modules separated by at least 30 centimeters, and it uses the position difference between them to maintain the heading. And as such, you could literally fly straight through an open metal structure and have no problems with that metal interfering with the sensors. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to connect this to an autopilot. We're going to use a cube orange for this. It's my gold one, but it's the same as the orange plus that you've got here with regards to connectivity. And then I'm going to walk you through the basic options and configuration around this GPS. I am not going to show you everything because there is so much on this, it is crazy. And then I'm going to walk you through the process of updating the firmware. Now, that is actually very important because when you get this GPS module, it may not be fully up to date. And there are two elements to actually updating the firmware. You need to update the firmware for the GPS module itself, the UBlox module, but you also need to update the AP PRIF firmware that that is on the onboard SOC. However, we'll do the connections first and then we'll move on to the firmware after. Now to walk you through the basic options on this, I'm going to connect it up to a Cube Autopilot. For this, we're going to need power. So I'm going to plug in the XT30 extension cable that they include and I'm then simply going to power it off a LiPo. And then we're also going to plug in one of the CAN ports. So I'm going to plug it into that one there and then I'm going to plug that in to CAN1 on our Cube Autopilot. Next, we're then going to power up the GPS and plug in our autopilot and then we will connect to it over on Mission Planner. Now, the first thing you'll notice when we power the GPS up is that the LEDs kick in. Frankly, the brightness on these is amazing. They are some of the brightest LEDs that I have seen on any GPS module. They are fully configurable via the software with regards to brightness and you can install the software such as a Lua script on this as well to have your own custom applications and you can do all sorts of really cool things with them. But if you wanted to use these as say a beacon, you absolutely could and this thing is going to have no problems being seen. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do in Mission Planner is obviously connect to your autopilot. So we're going to select my cube orange there and connect. And then you're going to need to make sure that the CAN bus on your autopilot is correctly configured. Now, they do show the settings that you need to change in the Here Pro manual, but I'm going to walk you through that very quickly here as well. To do this, I usually go into the config and go down to the full parameter list. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your CAN bus is enabled to do this type can underscore D in the search box. And what you're looking for is can underscore D1 underscore protocol. That needs to be set to number one and your can underscore D2 underscore protocol set to one as well. The next thing you need to do is search for can underscore P. And what we're looking is for our can underscore P1 underscore driver and our can underscore P2 driver. And again, these both need to be set to one. Finally, to make sure that the GPS is configured correctly in Ardropilot, you need to search for the GPS type option. So GPS underscore type. This needs to be configured and set to number nine. That is telling it that it is a drone can GPS. 
The final option is the configuration for the LEDs, allowing the autopilot to control the LEDs as the standard status lights, allowing them to flash yellow like you were seeing just now. And to do that, you want to search for NTF underscore LED. You're looking for NTF underscore LED underscore types, and the option for that needs to be set to 231. If you wanted to use your own custom options, you would not need to set this. This sets it to allow it to have the status from the autopilot. Now to check everything is working, if we go under our hardware ID screen, you should now see all of the devices showing. We should then start to see our GPS module appear. So you can see we've now got a compass appearing under UAV CAN. And finally, if we go under the compass screen, you can see that there are two compasses that have been detected because remember this GPS does still have a compass built in. You can see we have the SPI compass on board the Cube Autopilot and then we've got number 125, which is our UAV CAN compass. Now to do all of the configuration and make sure everything is set correctly, you will need to go into the Drone CAN UAV window, select Mavlink CAN 1. This will then search the CAN buses on the GPS and will show you the devices that are installed. You can see here that we've picked up device 127, which is Mission Planner. That is our external USB connection. We got device number 10. That is actually our flight controller's node ID itself. And then you can see device 125, which is our here Pro. So if I extend that out, you can see that there. It's fully operational and connected. If we then click on the menu option, you have the option of going into parameters, restart, update, or do the CAN pass through. If we go into parameters, this will then download all of the options that are available for this GPS module. As you can see, the list for the Here Pro is dramatically bigger than it is on a, say, Here 3. That is because there is so much more to be able to control on this. Not only have you got the GPS options for that chipset, you've also got that STM32H7 as well. So we've got the bird serial number. We've got all of the options that list for the compass. We've got the GPS options, the GPS modes, as well as the options for the I.O., the LED and the C. Serial port. Now, depending on what you do will depend on what you need to change. As it comes today, you don't need to change anything just to get the GPS working like a normal GPS module. Here, though, is where you would change the settings if you wanted to change it to, say, a base or a rover with regards to using it in RTK. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we do have full control over these LEDs available via Lua Script, but you can also just adjust the standard settings like brightness as well, and I just want to demonstrate that now. So, currently, I've got it on the lowest setting, which is number one. If we move it over to, say, zero, we can actually turn off the LEDs that are on the GPS module. I can set it back to one, which puts it back to the lowest level of brightness. We can set it to two, write the params for that, which will set it brighter again. And finally, we can set it to number three, which is the brightest option available. Frankly, you're competing with the sun at this point when you're using this setting. But if I write that, you can see it's gone to the maximum brightness again. And it is just astonishing how bright these LEDs can go. So again, if you did want to use this as a beacon, you're going to have no problems doing that at all. I would advise for indoor use, you just set it to number one. Now, before we end this video, I want to show you how to update the firmware on the Here Pro. As I mentioned at the start of this section, there's actually two separate pieces of firmware involved. You have the firmware for the F9P GPS module from Ublox, and then you have the firmware for the onboard SOC, which is APPRIF or APGNSS. Now, you actually have to update both of these separately, and I'm going to walk you through the process of doing them one at a time. We will do the GNSS firmware for APPRIF first, and then we will actually do the UBLOX firmware update as well. If you get yourself a Here Pro, it probably won't have the latest firmware installed unless your dealer has already done it for you. So if you do get one and find some of the features don't work as expected, this is what you're going to need to do to not only get base working, rover working, but also that moving baseline feature as well. 
So with regards to checking and updating the AP Priv firmware, now to do this, we need to have our Here Pro connected to our Cube Autopilot via the CAN bus port. And then we're going to connect to the Cube. We're going to go into Setup, down to Drone CAN UAV CAN, and then we're going to select Mavlink CAN 1, wait for everything to appear. And then here you can see our Here Pro is showing down here and that is our GPS module. If we go down the bottom here, you can see our current software version. Currently, my module is on version 1.1233, etc. That was the latest version when I did the last update. However, checking today, there is a new version of the firmware available. It is important that you do this firmware update before we move on to updating the UBlox firmware, as I mentioned earlier, because you need to do both to make sure that the module is fully updated. In the description, there will also be a link to this QPilot GitHub page. Now, this is the GNSS PRIF release page, and it has all of the updates for the GNSS PRIF firmware. Now, as you've seen earlier, my version was version 1.12. However, today, the latest version available is version 1.13.2. So what you're going to want to do is download this version of the firmware. Next, we're going to go into Mission Planner. Right now, we have our Here Pro connected to our Cube Autopilot via Canvas. The Here Pro is powered and it is connected to the PC via USB. We're then going to go into Setup and then we're going to select Drone UAV CAN and Mavlink CAN 1. We'll then wait for the Here Pro to show up. You can see there it is ID number nine on mine. And if we go down the bottom here, you can see that the current version of firmware is version 1.12. And we want to update that to that new version 1.13. Now to do this, we're going to click on the menu over here and click update. It'll give us the option to search the internet for the update. However, for this, I'm going to say no. We're then going to go to my downloads folder, find, that latest firmware and then we're going to select the correct firmware for our module so we want the here pro and we're going to select the here pro firmware.bin once we've selected the firmware we're then going to allow it to perform the update now this will take a few minutes so please have some patience and allow it to complete before doing anything else once this firmware update completes, you should then see the module reboot. And if we now take a look under our software version, you can now see we're on version 1.13. And that has updated the AP Prif GNSS firmware on our Here Pro module. Now AP Prif is done, it's time to move on to the UBlox firmware. Now, just a bit of a warning, this does come with a bit of risk. There is the potential here for you to be able to brick your GPS if something was to go wrong. So before you do this, make sure that if you're powering the GPS off a LiPo, it has plenty of juice in it. Don't use a flat one, make sure it's fully charged. Make sure there's no chance of an accidental unplug of the cable. Everything on the bench is nice and safe because once you start the update process, it will take about five minutes and you need to make sure that it doesn't get disturbed whilst that's in progress. Now, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is download the correct firmware for the Here Pro. Now, I will put a link to this in the description. This page is for the Z. F9P and then when you go on the bottom of the page there is an area for firmware update and you want to download the Z-F9P HPG version 1.32 firmware and this is the file we're going to need to upload to the module. Alongside the firmware for the F9P, you're going to need to download uCenter. Now again, there will be a link to this in the description. I suggest downloading uCenter, not uCenter 2, because that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. You then want to go to the QPilot Docs website and follow the instructions for updating the firmware on the here. Four. Now, under this instructions, it gives you all of the information of the Here 4 module. Note that we're updating the Here Pro here, but I found following the Here 4 instructions worked for me, and the update process for the Here Pro didn't. What you want to do is go down to the section that says U-Center Firmware Update, and you want to follow the instructions for updating via pass-through. Now here, you simply follow the instructions, enable can pass-through for here four. You then select the port for U-Center to connect on, 
follow the instructions like it shows here and then perform the firmware update with the firmware file that I showed you to download just before this section. Just to demo this, we have the Hear Pro connected to the Cube Autopilot via CAN bus and the Hear Pro is powered. We then have a USB connection from our Autopilot to our PC and here you can see it's connected in Mission Planner. We're then going to go over to Config and then we're going to go into Setup, Optional Hardware and then what we want to do is find our Drone UAV CAN page, wait for things to connect. So we're going to click Mavlink CAN 1, wait for everything to be picked up. And then what we want to do once we found our module, this is our Cube Pilot Here Pro module here. If we just extend that out, you can see Here Pro. We're going to click on the menu and then we're going to select CAN pass through Here 3 Plus stroke 4. We're then going to select the port, which is 500, click OK. Leave the board rate setting as it is, click OK, and then we're ready to move on to U Center. Once in U Center, we're going to click on this little icon here, which is the connect icon, and we're going to select network connection. Now you can see already I have my previous network connection that I used to update it showing from before, but for today, I'm going to click new. We're going to use this TCIP address. You can see that listed there, so it's TCP colon forward slash forward slash 127.0.0.1 colon 500. We're then going to select OK and then we have a connection between our GPS and our uCenter software. We're then going to click on tools and select our firmware update. This will bring up this screen. We can then here select our firmware that we want to use to update our GPS module. This is the one that we downloaded earlier, so we're going to select that. You then want to make sure your configuration is as it is shown here. So you have this box ticked with that board rate shown, which is 230400. You then have the top box unticked, the middle two, which is send training sequence and use chip arrays ticked, and then transfer image to RAM unticked. Once that is done, we're then simply going to click go. And this is then going to begin the process of writing the firmware. Now this process will take five to 10 minutes to complete. So please do not disturb it in the process. Otherwise you could brick your GPS module, simply allow it to complete. And then once it's done, you will have the latest firmware installed on the unit. Okay, so once it's complete, you should see all green boxes on the right hand side and it will say at the bottom, firmware update utility completed successfully, exit code zero. So that is the firmware updates done. As a result of that, the Here Pro should now have all the expected functionality. You should have base functionality, rover functionality, all the GPS working, but also it now will work with the moving baseline feature. Now, before I wrap this video up today, I want to talk about what is coming in part two, because we're going to be installing the Here Pros onto this, a Cube Autopilot based quad. Now, this is the Hexoon 650. It's got a Cube Orange Plus installed as well as a Here 3 Plus at the moment. What we're going to be doing in part two, though, is installing the Here Pro onto this. We're going to do two things. We're going to do a standard rover and base setup. So we'll have one Here Pro on this and one on the base for RTK, but then we're going to be demonstrating and testing that moving baseline feature where we install two of the Here Pros onto this quad and show you that you can fly around metal objects and not have to worry about the effect they would usually have on the compass. Now, as I've said, I want to say a big thank you to both CubePilot as well as 3DXR for sending these over. If you're interested in seeing part two, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you want to order one of these, if you want to order anything you've seen here today, it is all listed on 3DXR's website. There will be a link to it in the description. I hope you have found today's video useful. If you've got a Here Pro, it should have shown you how to do the firmware updates. So what we'll do in part two is take you through actually using it. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.